It was Tom King who wrote, The truth about stories is that that's all we are. This story is about First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and Indigenous health research and is led by the University of Manitoba and community researchers over the past four to five decades. The story has many beginnings. In 1970, Dr. J.A. Hildes founded the Northern Medical Unit. This unit encouraged researchers and clinicians to pursue research to help improve the health of First Nations and Inuit. And then there was the creation of the Northern Health Research Unit, which eventually gave birth to the Manitoba First Nations Center for Aboriginal Health Research. Over the last two decades, we have also seen the development of the First Nations Regional Health Survey, the Manitoba Métis Federation's Health and Wellness Department, and the Manitoba Inuit Association. The beginnings have since grown and matured, and although there is still some growth to do, a story has taken shape. These beginnings are a result of your own partnerships and relationships with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit and indigenous communities in Australia, New Zealand, Norway, the U.S., and beyond. It's very, very important to begin that journey of, of learning both the researcher as well as the community because they're coming together as partnership and they have the ultimate answers to the questions that are being researched upon. I think it's evolved pretty substantially over time where communities are now seen as partners in, in the uh, organization of research and uh, have the capacity to say no if it's not of interest to them or they don't think it's going to have a positive impact uh, or may not be worth the effort. So I, I think there's been a real evolution towards uh, community participation and certainly the decision making and in the consent seeking. There was a time in the 1980s and 1990s where Canadian researchers wanting to get involved in First Nations and Inuit research would go to the library, search the stacks and find articles related to their work. The work they read came from Manitoba. Manitoba was known nationally and internationally as a leader. The Northern Health Research Unit, which later became the Manitoba First Nations Center for Aboriginal Health Research, was created in the mid-80s. At that time, family doctors and specialists saw research undertaken in communities was done without community knowledge or consent. Expectations about the research process have become clearer over time. It used to be that there would be more researcher control of research. And, uh, and I never really experienced that just because of the approaches that my supervisors, Q Young and then Pat Coffert, Dr. Pat Coffert, who was really adamant about community involvement. So that was not a difficult thing to incorporate in your research when you're being encouraged to do it. We didn't have a name, a fancy name for it in those days, but um, all the way through we always tried to involve the community. The biggest challenge uh, I think was, was, was um, not really finding a space in the university to be able to do Métis research. Um, the mechanisms were not there to be able to figure out where are the Métis, who are they, where do they live and I found that in the community at the MMF. Um, there is no other mechanism in the province to reach Métis, that's it. And I figured out that it wasn't going to start in the university, it had to be done in the community, yeah. Getting First Nations to work with the researchers in a trusting capacity because during that period of time, what the leadership expressed regarding the research projects was, you know, prevalent within the communities. They didn't want to work with researchers anymore. People coming in asking questions and doing things and what are the end results of those research projects? How did it benefit them? 
so they were very frustrated with people wanting to come on reserve to study them. For what benefit did they say? I like it. I like the research. So, um, a lot of people I've heard say that uh, so many research were, research were researched to death. I disagree. Simply because um, I worked in, uh, with a lot of doctors, young doctors, med medical students for many years. And uh, when I w was working with them in, in the 1970s, early 70s, they were telling me that Inuit n never had diabetes, Inuit never had heart attacks, those kind of things. So we're proud of that, that, you know, medical people are saying that about the Inuit people. At the same time, I have this objection where I have some doubts. How did we know they didn't have diabetes? How did we know they didn't have heart attack without doing research? This is why I support research, as long as we are told at the end results what the results are. Granted, maybe sometimes for certain uh, research we might not be able to know, but eventually I hope that you know, we're involved in every aspect. As a First Nations health researcher, I've seen a shift in the way research has been done when it comes to building those relationships um, to a point where, as First Nations, we are leading our own research projects. We all are full partners from start to finish. We have that expertise and knowledge that it takes to see a successful research project through, such as the, um, the success of the Regional Health Survey, which has been in existence since the 1990s. Um, and based on this, the evolution of the RHS actually came out was was a result of poor a poor history of research done with communities where oftentimes we're excluded from that process. But today I see a shift where we are leading leading our own research process processes and building that infrastructure to govern our own information. Over time, research processes shifted from being research led to being partnership based. First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and Indigenous communities and organizations are being engaged in the research process from beginning to end. What the partnership looks like and how it works depends on the context. Every partnership is different and built on respect and trust. Although it takes time, the process is rewarding in many different ways. Well, I don't think you could have research that's beneficial to communities unless you have this kind of partnership. So I think if you, if you weren't part of a partnership where there is trust, um, where there's respect for the expertise and the knowledge that the community holds, where there are shared goals and aspirations that are being met by their research, but when you put this kind of effort in, um, I think there's a much greater chance that the community's needs are gonna be understood and they're gonna be met and they're gonna to wanna to continue to partner uh, in this way. Well, what, what I really enjoyed about the projects that I've been involved in is that um, I've had an opportunity to work with different community members, both from a data collection standpoint and from a planning standpoint. And that's where I get the greatest uh, amount of value is through the relationships that I continue to build and develop um, and ultimately um, share knowledge that can be um, they can benefit the community um, in some way. And, um, and then hearing stories um, directly back from people that um, were able to experience some benefit um, from, from the actual research uh, or some research outcome um, that um, can be you know, enjoyed uh, by, by the community. Ultimately, I think that'll be great. As a graduate student in the early 1970s, uh, I spent two years uh, living with a family, learning the language, uh, traveling on the land with people when they went hunting. Uh, I would go out for a week in the winter and uh, we would stay in snow houses and uh, uh, eat off the land. I can remember going out with trappers where all they would take would be uh, a bit of tea and a, 
a package of pilot biscuits because they were completely confident they were going to be able to feed themselves from the land and we would uh, leave for a week with no food and that was a, a bit of a, a shock for a kid from the suburbs of Toronto who had uh, uh, never had that experience before. And that early experience for me was part of the reason why I continued to enjoy working in, uh, in First Nation and Inuit communities. Uh, so the pleasure of doing research in some ways was subordinate to the pleasure of simply being in the communities. I wouldn't be able to travel into the communities and have any connection if I didn't have uh, relationships uh, with that community to, to get there. I've, uh, I've had a really... Uh, I haven't really had a lot of challenges in, to, in terms of um, going to, and working in the community. I've been welcomed and, and mentored and, and uh, supported. Building relationships is, is very easy for me to do and, and, you know, and enjoy. It doesn't even seem like work, right? It's just, just meeting people and getting to know people. The most enjoyable aspect, um, probably maintaining that connection with, uh, with uh, our own people. Enhancing that relationship uh, with our people, um, and to demonstrate that we can do our own research, we're strong, capable people, and so to emphasize our abilities and our uh, our uh, assets in that regards. I find that um, people have been very generous with sharing uh, their traditions with me, um, and so. Um, it's very common to get invited to gatherings, um, spiritual ceremonies, uh, things like that. So I find that there's been a lot of personal growth. So that I find that quite good. <laughs> like I find that very pleasant. Um, that that's that's been really helpful. Um, and I really just like meeting people and listening to people. Um, I think it's really important to have the community fully involved in every step of the whole project. You, it just works so much better. It's very efficient. Um, if you can attend to the issues of concern from the community right from the beginning, then it's very fluid. You also have the benefit of having identified members in the community who will work with you and and make you aware of some of the issues of concern for, for community, but also issues of interest. So I think it, it has to be a full partnership where you're each contributing what you can from your area of expertise. And um, as a researcher going into a community, who knows the community better than the community members, right? I don't think we'll go back to the old ways, definitely. There are people who stand for uh, blood being taken without consent and stored, you know, to use for genetics sort of horror stories. Or the nutrition thing I just referred to that came out for our people when they were testing the kids in residential school. You know, so those are the horror stories. And I think now with our leadership and us as um, researchers in political organizations or university settings, I think we know what, what, we're, what we're faced with and we try and improve our conditions. So I think it'll get better. There's um, a respected elder named Willie Irmine who lives in Saskatchewan and he talks about an ethical space between cultures. So um, uh, there's an indigenous, various, many indigenous cultures, and then there are other uh, cultures in Canada. Um, there, it's not homogeneous either, the non-indigenous culture. And, but we can all meet in the space between the cultures, and he calls it the ethical space. And it's a space of uh, trust and respect. Uh, Sean Wilson calls it uh, a place of ceremony because uh, doing research is a ceremony. The University of Manitoba um, became very vital to us uh, because they, they have always had uh, qualified uh, people in the health field to guide us along. And uh, we, we always have to have partnership side by side. If um, people with degrees are going to go ahead with researches, then the community members have to be side by side with them, and that's what they did. They formed partnership, and it worked. There's no cookie cutter approach to partnership and there's no cookie cutter approach to how to translate research into action. It's all based on context. 
But definitely the partnership is the way to go, and it's the partnership that defines how that information can find utility for them. The transformation of research process has been a profound shift in paradigm. Lessons from practice of developing partnerships between Manitoba communities, community and university-based researchers have been shared nationally and internationally, and eventually led to the transformation of national ethical guidelines. Partnership-based research is now paving the way for the development of the next generation of researchers, for whom working closely with communities will be the only natural way of undertaking research with First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and other Indigenous communities. What, I, what I've seen is the, um, uh, the, the importance of relationship building and, and helping and mentorship. That's what I, I've, I've certainly experienced that in, in Manitoba, that uh, I've had lots of people take an interest in me and uh, work with me uh, directly uh, and, and help me in some of the stumbling that I, you know, have, that everybody has in research. It was a tremendous honor, really, to have been a researcher in Manitoba that uh, I felt I had the support of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs and the different tribal councils around the province uh, who, who uh, I think, uh, respected the work that we were doing, and that was a real honor to be part of that uh, process and contribute to uh, uh, trying to find solutions to some of the health problems uh, in uh, Manitoba First Nations communities and Inuit communities in the Kiwaitan. Uh, it's in the context of doing this work, um, having the trust of the community is just a tremendous honor and uh, I'd just like to thank all those people who uh, contributed to that over the years. I was a lucky uh, young person uh, that day that I saw a poster in the wall of the, in the, on the wall of the it was the doctor's cloakroom, actually, at the Grace Hospital, and that I met uh, a visionary person like Dr. Hildes, um, who um, uh, trusted me enough to introduce me to communities in the north, starting with uh, Percy Moore uh, Hospital at uh, Hodgson, Manitoba, and who, who, um, who nurtured... Um, me as a person and as a as a as a, a professional as well. So we all have that kind of obligation. I and I um, I hope I can um, repay uh, the trust that uh, he had in me and that now the communities um, that I can repay the trust uh, and respect that I uh, have received from the communities. Uh, we live in a fast world today, and. The health research um, is more important than ever before. We see new illness all the time, things that we don't even understand. And, and um, when I was growing up, there was very little illness. There was even no medication from Western world, only the Inuit medicine that we um, didn't practice anymore. Uh, health research is important because maybe they'll get into that, the young uh, Inuit researchers get into what our ancestors practice. Maybe it will combine to both. Uh, that would be a good thing. Um, I will always support the research um, simply because uh, I'm an individual who believes in it. And I'm an individual who um, who supports anything to do with health. My background is in health, and I like to uh, keep going forward. And I have many, many grandchildren that maybe someday they're going to be involved in health, different field. So that's important to me. And it's important to our community to grow together uh, with the rest of the country. We have come a long way together over the years, and the story is not complete. There is still room for growth, translating evidence into usable information, moving from knowledge to action, dealing with dwindling funding opportunities, shifting from pilot projects to sustainable service innovations. These are key areas where innovation is required, but we are leaders and we will find a way. Well, I think it's, uh, it's frustrating because change takes an inordinate 
inordinate amount of time and you know you're always hoping that uh, the uh, conclusion that children are living in poverty or in ill health or at the substantial social disadvantage would move us as a larger community to make changes more quickly and more completely uh, but I think uh, it really does take patience and time and uh, and continuing advocacy to kind of move systems and populations and communities along. You know, I would say if you're interested in this kind of work, you're welcome. Anybody that's interested in addressing health inequalities in First Nation Métis Inuit Health is welcome. And we'll work with you, we'll mentor you, we'll support you, and we'll try to find ways to d for you to develop the skill set that you require so that you can be effect an effective partner in this particular space because we need more people and it's, it's important. Uh, we don't blow our horn quite as much as we should. It's very interesting. We were running the pre, like getting Aboriginal students into medicine uh, at least close to a decade before any other medical school. But being Manitobans, we just kind of keep low key, you know. So we so we don't brag about things, but we really do have to um, start putting our hands up and saying, you know, we've been doing this for a long time, and and, and we've done some really excellent work, and and uh, it will it's work that will continue.